My name is Teresa Eisenbarth and I'm a medicine hat artist. I currently have an exhibition at the Esplanade called Walking the Flats and it runs until August 14th. So if you'd like to go and see the exhibit, you have to book tickets at the Esplanade or get your mom and dad to book you a ticket. Um, maybe you'll even see me there painting on a really large painting. Today I'm going to show you how I start painting. So you can see I have a cradle board here and all a cradle board is, is a wood panel and it basically is a frame with a wood panel on top of it. And so I like to paint on that because I use a lot of texture and things called medium in my artwork. And so if you had different paints and things at home, it might be fun to go out and collecting things that you could actually glue into your acrylic paints. Basically, that's what I'm doing when I'm using these medium products. So before I start a painting, I like to do a little sketch. I'm just going to hold this up for you here. And what I do, this is what I call a value sketch. And you'll see a little chart at the top. It says light, medium, dark, or LMD. And what I do with that is it gives me a moment to look at the image that I'm painting and figure out where parts of the image are really, really dark, where parts of the image are um, kind of a, a neutral color, a medium value is what I say, and then where the lightest parts of the painting are. So that's what I usually use to start um, sketching um, my image out when I, when I start to paint. So it might be something that you could do because the more you look at the image, the easier it is in the end to finish a painting. So hopefully you don't hurt your eyes too much. Now to start a painting, um, I have my image here. I think you can see this. And I really liked this, um, um, I really like this print that I did. You'll notice that I print out most of my um, uh, images onto paper so that I can look at that when I'm painting. Some people like to look at a TV with all the technology that they have. Um, so they'll take pictures with their phone and then they'll run those pictures through their TV. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have mom and dads that are pretty technically advanced that they'll be able to do that for you. But if not, a good old print works just as well. So I like to um, select my images that I'm going to paint. And so in this one, this is a street corner down on the River Flats. So this is Woodman Avenue, and it's a corner that I used to um, pass by frequently when I grew up on the flats. And I really liked the sign in this, um, in this image, and that's why I chose it um, to, to start a painting for you today. So after I've done my sketch, then I have my handy little ruler and some of my other tools ready. Um, I'll just kind of go over what I normally use. So I have just a plain ruler with a cork back and I use that for measuring on my image and then to my support, which is my cradle board and a pencil. I have an eraser, a white eraser. I have a palette paper that I really, I like to use for, um, it's, they used to call it stroke paint, uh, stroke paper. Um, I, I use a lot of this and then I have three different size brushes because my image is 11 by 14 it's quite small so this would probably be the largest brush that I would use for this um, you'll notice I have a couple other tools here I have a big bucket of water I have some fluid acrylics they're called and I use a lot of those because they're really really strong in color and then I have gloss medium some gesso, some chroma crackle, which makes some really, really cool and funky effects. And I have some glass beads. So those are things that I possibly will use and show you a little bit today. We'll see how far we get. And then I have my paints, of course. So I mentioned that I'm an acrylic mixed media artist. And so I like to lay out all of my paints before I start. So. So now I'm going to look at um, my image and I'm going to start laying out my image. So, so I do look back and re refer to my sketch too when I'm, pa when I'm painting to make sure that I have all the dark values that I've recorded. So 
So normally I work on a wall, but today I'm sitting down. So I use my handy little ruler and I start to measure. This is a pretty old fashioned way to do things. <laughs> You can see, and I'm not sure if you can see on my ruler how gummed up it actually is. So when, I, when I'm painting with my paintbrush, the paint tends to get stuck on the edges and then I have to take a scissor and basically scrape all of that paint off so that I have a clean edge to work with again. So this corner to me feels like home. I, I like I like street corners because it's a good reminder of where where I'm going to and where I'm what, what I've left and they're also really good markers so if you kind of get lost if you look at your street corner then you can figure out exactly where you are some people might think that's goofy but Woodman Avenue. Maybe if you're down there on the river flats and you're walking your dog or going for a walk with your mom and dad, you could look for this sign. I really like the river flats area because, like I mentioned, that's where I grew up. To me, it felt safe and it felt like home to me. There was a great sense of place, and it's a place that I felt like I belonged. I had friends there. I had neighbors that I relied on when my mom was maybe gone to work, and when my brothers and sisters weren't home to take care of me. So you can see when I'm drawing, I'm just doing a rough sketch right now. But I'll probably have to go back in when I'm painting and readjust some things. Because as you're working and painting, you'll notice, oh, I missed that line. Or I need to include the other line to make the image make sense. Now, most painters don't paint by value. I'm not sure about my sign here, but we'll, we can adjust that later. Probably should come up. Okay, so we've got that in. I'm not sure if I'm going to put this other cross sign there. So that's the fun thing about painting too, is you can decide what you want in there and what you're going to leave and what you're going to take out. It's kind of the fun part. So then you can use your imagination and make things up. You notice there's some grass here. So that's another thing we can add later. Now I'm going to measure. So if we're looking at one point perspective, Everything's going to flow to that one corner. What I really liked about this image is this little white spot at the end. It gives me a sense of direction so I don't get lost on my way to school or to my friend's house. So to me, that white corner is super, super important. Because when I'm painting, it's probably going to be the lightest part of the painting. So let's put that in. It's like a little hidden hideaway back there. Makes me wonder what's back there. What sort of interesting things can I explore? Now we've got a whole bunch of trees here, and we've got some fences. And then like me when I was little. I used to skip over the lines. There was that rhyme, I can't quite remember it, but you didn't want to step on the line of the sidewalk because I think it was like you break your mother's back or something silly like that. Hey, kind of looks like a train track, but. <laughs> so some of these trees, we're just gonna put lines in for them. This is a great way to start 
when you just put lines in, well, you see there's a big space there. Sometimes I'll mark the sides of them. Because now I'm thinking when I'm looking at this, where's the light on this painting? Where's the light coming from? That's always an important thing that I'm always thinking about when I'm sketching things out. It looked like it was a pretty dreary day, but then again, that's the fun of it all. We can make some of that stuff up. I can see that there's a little bit of sun peeking through up there. I'm gonna put that in. There's where my yellow sun's gonna be. There's my tree. There's my other tree that's close by it. And there's so majestic. I'm just gonna put a couple lines in for those. Often I spend, I spend a lot of time drawing my images out before I start. So I use a pencil just like everyone else, but I often like to use a black gesso. And I didn't have that today with me, and instead of the black gesso, I'm just going to use black paint. All right, so we've got a little bit going here. Probably is good to start. So now that I have a basic layout, I know there's lots of little things I'm missing, and that's okay. If some of these things in here bother you, you can take your white eraser and erase them off just like this. But I really don't worry about stuff like that because when I start painting, a lot of that's gonna be covered up anyways. So the next thing I would do is I really like to layer my work, and to layer my work, I use a lot of glazing. And you're going, what is glazing? So that is these really, really strong paints. They're super liquidy. I only need a little dot like that. And then I'll use a little bit of medium. This is in gloss medium. I have to get it open first. Kind of super liquidy. It's kind of like water, except it has a white look to it. When this dries, it'll be clear though. So. That's the exciting part, to see what colors you can mix and what colors you can make. That's the part I love about painting. All those little mistakes and happy accidents and things that develop as you're painting, those are the things that keep it interesting for me. And I'm gonna mix this up. What a pretty color, huh? This is called magenta. I use a lot of magenta in my work. And now I'm gonna cover all of this up. And then I'm going to go over some of my lines. So you'll see that the sides are kind of not painted yet. I'm probably going to do that next and I'm just going to show you a little bit of that and I can finish that part later. I like to take a lot of the paint that I have from my classes that people don't use and I like to recycle that paint and that's what I use to paint the sides of most of my pieces. Sometimes it's good to add a little bit of black to it but then it feel, I feel at least I'm using up some of, I'm not wasting paint because paint's very expensive. Okay, so now I've got that covered with that magenta color and now I'm going to go back in and I'll start to draw in some of my lines so I can see them a little bit better. See, now you can really see what you're doing. You're thinking, what a mess before. <laughs> it does always look like a mess when painting. But painting can be messy, but it's fun. Sometimes I even finger paint too, just because when you smudge the paint and smear it like that, it really creates a neat effect. Then you can control your paints a lot better. So you notice that 
when I'm drawing this out. Then I can add a few little details with my brush. I'm painting these trees and there's a big bunch there that need to be drawn in. And I'm noticing here under the sign that says Woodman, it's a really dark valley there. See how almost black that is? So I'm already here. I'm going to paint that in. See that part right there? And I've got that little part that I think is maybe like the sun and the sunset. Now while I'm using this black paint, I can create lots of shapes with this too. I can make branches. And this is kind of the foundation, the black part of most of my paintings. I spend a lot of time doing this and getting it to the point where I really like it. But I might have to speed things up a little bit today. When you do your branches, it's always fun to leave some holes. And why do you think we leave holes? Any guesses? I often say it's where so we can have the birds fly through. The, hole, the holes need to be there so that the birds have a spot to fly. So we're going to leave some holes like that. See? Those little holes there? You don't have to have everything be so perfect. If you wanted it perfect, you would just use a photograph, right? But we're not doing a photograph. We're doing a painting. And you should use the colors that you like. And you should use maybe a couple of the goofy colors too that you like to make it more interesting. Maybe you're a girl that really likes pink or maybe you're a boy that loves yellow. So painting is an opportunity to use all those things that you really like. So some of these parts where this grass is, let's just scribble this in. When you're painting too, it's often important to think about where's my darkest part of the painting and I look there's lots of dark shadows in the trees here even in the grass there's dark parts so I like to put all of those things in I find it helps me to see what I'm supposed to be working with There's those goofy little grass, see? That could look like grass, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look exactly like grass. We've got this super straight rock line, but that's not the way things actually look in real life. Some of that grass grows into those crevices of the sidewalk. Well, you'll notice I have an angled brush. I don't know if you can see that. I really like these for drawing out my urban scapes or my street scenes at Medicine Hat because they give me a lot of control and I have a nice point at the end that I can use for fine lines. Okay, it's starting to take shape a little bit. Now this part here might look a little confusing because this is that tree but it's really the tree behind it that's super dark so let's darken that up just so we have a little bit of difference and you can see what I'm doing sometimes when you're looking at some of these trees they actually really don't make much sense do they see you're the artist you can figure out Make some things up as you go along. That's the fun part. See these straight lines we started with? We're going to blur some of those out. Remember I said about the finger painting part? See, you can smear your paint too. That's a fun thing to do. I like doing that. Especially if you have a real big area that you need to, you know, like this 
leaves that are down there and then just smear some of them in there. There's no right or wrong. Except that your fingers get dirty. And then we've got our trees. Oh, those trees. Those pesky trees, hey? I think I'm going to take a different brush. Let me put this there. I'm going to fill some of those in with a bigger brush. Because I've got a lot of dark areas to fill up. I can hear. Are you thinking it's starting to look a little messy? That's because it is. Okay, and then this is called scrumbling, where you can really get in here and create some funky effect with your brush. So the idea here is just to add a little bit of an idea that there's leaves. But I'm not going to draw a relief in. I'm kind of too lazy to do that. Not that I'm lazy, I should say. I just don't think it's important to have to add all those little things in there. Because remember I said your eye's going to make some of that stuff up? Good! Okay, looks like a mess, right? That's what we want. Remember I said I made a mess at the top part there of these two little bands? And I can go in and fix that with a little bit of white. Look at that, see? Now you can go back in and fix a few little things with some white if you need to. I know this part of the sign is going to be quite white. And if you need to go back and use your ruler for this color, you can do that too. It's just another way I use to fix little areas. Look at that. There. See? That's why acrylics are so great. Wherever I'm putting this white now, it's going to be a little bit brighter in value. We're just going to add some of this in here. Kind of looks like the light's coming this way, doesn't it? So if you covered up some of those little bits, you can just paint those back in again. There's some blue. So I like to paint in layers. So to me, this is all going to be green. So I'm just going to cover all this up. And you're going, well, why are you using blue then? Because blue and yellow make green. So next I'm going to cover it with, I can paint yellow in there, or I can use a glaze. There, look at, see? This is all going to be green. Even parts of this are green here. Green, green, green. We love green. Okay, even all of this. Let's get it going. Oop, look at my mistake. Oops, what am I going to do? We can fix that later. <laughs> it wasn't quite dry up there. Okay, this is all going to be... So often what I do as well is I actually will paint in the sky before I start. And I didn't do that with this painting, so... Then I've got a little bit more work to do. There. So thinking, 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 where are, where's the bush part going to be? And I'm just going to cover lots of this up. Green, green, green. With the blue. All right. There. Now everything in Medicine Hat is green, isn't it? There's lots of green parts. Especially when you go down to your favorite park. See? So then we're kind of just cleaning by number, aren't we? I know this is 
it's all going to be very in shape and clean. This is a great way to get all that covered quickly. So now let's put some yellow in here. So if I use this yellow in some spots, you'll see that there's lots of different variety of green leaves. This medium I'm using is kind of watery, but it's working out. I also have lots of paper towel handy all the time. I really like this blue towel you can find at the store. It's for shops and garages, but I think I'm kind of a studio as a shop, so why not? I like to use it. It's very absorbent. It makes your job easier for cleanup, too. Okay, see this? I'm probably not going to keep this, this color, but just to show you. Oh, see? What color does that make? Blue and yellow make green. See? So if I want this to be a different color of green, because I don't have green on my palette, then I can actually still go in and paint that in, right? So if I mix a green here, I'm just going to show you another way to do that. Yellow and blue make green. So I could mix a green too, but when I first start to layer, oops, now I have a little bit of orange. But we do have orange as well in the painting, don't we? Where do you see the orange? I didn't hear you. Did you say on some of these leaves, see? Those are look kind of orange, right? We can add that too as we go along. So if I use just paint, which I often sometimes do, if I want to go back in and add some detail. But I really like to layer the glazes first, just to get me started. It's a faster way of painting. Some might think it's kind of like a watercolor. Maybe you've done that in school. Or at a cafe at the Esplanade. See? Look at that. Kind of looks like magic, doesn't it? And then I know all this is going to be a bright. This is going to be bright. And you can take that same color and make some things yellow. So you notice I didn't put this. I'm not sure what's going on here. It's the side of a house. So I could have put that in, but because I'm the artist and I have control, I decided to leave it out. So we're maybe going to put just some green in there too. Okay, so often I like sidewalks that are bright. So if I want a really bright sidewalk. I'm going to mix white with yellow. And I'm going to put some of this in here where I had my white. It's looking fun. Now I can start to layer a few things. So if my sun is coming from this side, Often I'll draw a little arrow like this, just so I remember. If I'm painting on a wall, you'd be able to see it a little bit better than that. So when I'm adding different light parts, it's just a reminder to me what areas I may need to leave. What areas I'm going to paint in.
Okay, so I'm using my glass beads here and I often can't finish a painting in one sitting because if I'm adding some of these funky products, they have to dry before I can paint on top of them again. But I really like this product. Or you could go collect sand or, I'm trying to think what else you could use. I've used sand actually, and I've mixed it with paint and applied it. And then when it dries, I can paint over top of it. See how bumpy that makes the painting? I really like that. And then I'll use a product like this too to go in and finish my leaves because sometimes the leaves can be tricky and I like to have them layered. Let's put a little bit of this on the road. Yeah. Hopefully you can see what that looks like. Sorry, that was the warehouse guy in my studio and he came to see if I was going to lock the door when I left. So I will leave this dry. So I can't really do anything else on the painting right now. Otherwise, I'm going to probably smear those areas up. But the next step I would do is I would go in with a gel. It's called a gel and it's really a really thick paste. And what I'll do is I'll paint some of those leaves, those bunches of leaves in. And then I'll let that dry. And then I start to go back in and add my detail and some of my, uh, I'll start finishing the grass and putting in a lot more highlights. And one color I'm missing that I really like to add always is red. And I don't have that on my palette right now, but I can add that later. And so when everything dries, then I can go back in, add more highlights and start defining some of my tree area. And then often I'll use, um, like a lilac purple or a medium violet on my sidewalks and my streets. And that really gives the painting a real punch. So anyways, I think that's all we're going to do for today. And maybe I'll see you sometime soon.